on this edition of Shelby This Week, killed while on the phone with 911. We've got more on the Macomb Township man arrested in connection to his wife's murder, who was arraigned while in a hospital bed. Charlie? The ex-wife of Detroit rapper Eminem back in court. The latest on her drunk driving case coming up. And an Italian restaurant rivalry. How the story of Giuseppe Deanna and the drama that followed a Shelby Township restaurant is now coming to an end. We've got all of this plus much more right now. It tops our news this week. The man believed to have escaped during a barricaded gunman situation on Detroit's east side is now in police custody. Shelby Township Police swarmed the National Storage Center on 23 Mile Road earlier this month in the search for the gunman. Police say 25-year-old Keith Montgomery was involved in a dispute with his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend. When police responded, he allegedly opened fire at them. Three young children were inside that Detroit home. None were hurt. Montgomery was then arrested a day later in Shelby Township in the area of Van Dyke and 23 Mile Road after a brief foot chase. How and why Montgomery was found here in Shelby has not been released. A Macomb Township man is facing charges connected to the slaying of his wife while she was on the phone with 911. On October 1st, 38-year-old Ebony Byram called dispatchers from her home on County Ridge Lane about a domestic dispute. While on the line, gunshots rang in the background and communication was lost. Police say when they got there, Ebony was found dead and her husband, Hal Byram, was suffering from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Ebony's 16-year-old son was home at the time but wasn't hurt. Hal Byram is facing a felony firearms charge and a first-degree murder charge. He was arraigned from his hospital bed. He'll be back in court next week. The former manager of a Macomb County Italian restaurant will spend the next 16 months in prison. You may remember 64-year-old Giuseppe Deanna, the man accused of threatening a competitor back in 2009. Deanna was the manager of Tiramisu here in Shelby Township at 23 Mile and Shaner. Deanna admitted to threatening Pietro Ventimiglia, the owner of the competing restaurant known as Kitchen, not to open the business. In 2012, Deanna and his brother were sentenced to jail for beating Ventimiglia with a baseball bat and threatening to kill his family. They pled no contest in order to get a lesser charge from assault with intent to murder to assault with a deadly weapon. Less than two weeks to go before the historic 2016 election, and perhaps one of the most heated races in the state is right here in Macomb County, the race for Public Works Commissioner. Charlie Canato joins us now with a look at both campaigns, and Charlie, this is getting a little bit nasty. It, it sure is. You know, we're counting down the days until the 2016 election, and we're talking accusations and a county ethics violation. Check this out. Video obtained by Shelby TV shows the Public Works Commissioner Anthony Morocco showing a TV commercial in a county facility. And because of that video, the Macomb County Ethics Board says Morocco violated county ethics policy. He was fined $125 because the county forbids the use of public facilities for political purposes. Morocco, though he's firing back, he says this is political theater orchestrated by his Republican opponent, Candace Miller. So Kelly, ethics violation? Well, depends who you ask. Absolutely. So what about this commercial that they shot supposedly in, on you know public ground? But is it still airing? It is. In fact, wow. Morocco says the commercial was shot inside the Chapton pump station. That's in St. Clair Shores. He says technically it's owned by the drainage district, but county officials who find him say it's all the same thing. Jeez. Well, let's move to another seat. Um, for candidates that actually seem to be more like they're on a friendly playing ground, <laughs> uh, the race for county clerk. Yeah, in fact, let's take a look. We've got Fred Miller and Karen Spranger, the Democrat Fred Miller, Republican uh, Karen Spranger. They're vying to take over for outgoing clerk uh, Carmela Sabaugh, who announced earlier this year, as you remember, that she would be retiring. Now, Sabaugh was known for implementing new technology in the clerk's office, but if you listen to these candidates, Miller, who's endorsed by Sabaugh, says he wants to make technology easier, while his opponent says, let's make county records more accessible online. So one thing that I'd like to do is implement special training and create a new position in the clerk's office, that of senior ombudsperson or senior advocate. There are important reports that should be published to the citizens, and I'm hoping that the new website porthole that I can create will serve a purpose to educate people. 
The winner will become the newest county clerk in 24 years, and he or she will make more than $100,000 per year. Wow, 24 years. That's a huge yeah. responsibility. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Now we're getting a new clerk. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. and let's move to a more local race for the school board. Yeah, right. Let's take a look. We've got uh, four different candidates, Sana Elias, uh, Danielle Nisovsky, Marsha Nightingale, and Robert Ross. Robert Ross, of course, is the incumbent, as you remember. Four candidates. They're vying for two open seats on the Utica Community School School Board. We have to be very wise in our decision making and our budgeting to make sure that we can still provide quality care for our children. We improve communication with uh, the population of teachers and parapros and all of, you know, all of the district employees. Mm -hmm. um, improve communication with the community even. I would like to accomplish um, bringing back some of the programs. Mm -hmm. Look, like I said, looking at the budget. We need to make sure that I think that all, the, all, all of the students are either college or career ready. And you can watch more on all four of these candidates on Shelby TV. We even have a whole show dedicated to this school board race. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Charlie. And Shelby TV will be there for you on November 8th for Election Day coverage. Just head to our Shelby TV Facebook page. All day we will have election coverage. Yeah, in fact, as the polls close, we will be behind the scenes of Election Day talking with all the candidates running and much more. So tune in on November 8th. And still to come on Shelby this week, can you escape? Escape rooms are a trending hotspot all over the country, and now we have one right here in Shelby Township. Find out more next. Nick? Fall and winter means it's time to bulk up. Coming up, we'll take you through a healthy way to do it. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Kim Mathers, the ex-wife of Detroit rapper Eminem, appears before a judge months after a Shelby TV investigation led to the unsealing of court records. Charlie Cadato has been following this from the start and explains how she avoided standing trial. It's been more than a year since Kim Mathers allegedly drove drunk and got behind the wheel. We uncovered attempts to seal her court records, and we've been following this case closely ever since. You know, I appreciate you guys being here and wasting your time for all of this, but just want to get it behind me and move on from here. Kim Mathers hopes the judge will let her move on. Her OWI case has been in the courts for over a year, and this week she avoided standing trial by pleading no contest. You understand that? I do. You'll remember Mathers crashed in Macomb Township last year after allegedly driving drunk. Police say she told them it was a suicide attempt. Mathers told cops she drank a fifth of Malibu rum. You can see the scene in this obtained dash cam video. Kim Mathers said she's been drinking and driving. After the crash, Shelby TV's investigation discovered sealed court records, raising questions of preferential treatment. That's the reason we've been following this case so closely. It's now open to the public, and Mathers says she's getting the help she needs. As you heard, Kim says she wants to put all of this behind her. We'll have to see what the judge says at sentencing next month. Reporting for Shelby This Week, I'm Charlie Cadato. One hour, one team, one exit. Do you think you can escape an extreme escape room? A live action team-based escape room has just opened up in Shelby Township. We're a live action um, experience where you and your friends or possibly your coworkers are placed in movie-like themed environments where you have to solve puzzles, um, find clues, succeed at games of skill in order to work as a team in order to get out of the environment or solve the environment within a limited amount of time. You must search for clues, solve puzzles, and succeed at games of skill with the common goal of getting out of the room before the clock runs out. And there's three rooms to choose from, the bomb explosive room, patient zero, and the ransom. The escape room is open to corporate training, parties, or just a fun night out with friends. It's located on 23 Mile Road, just west of Hayes. And stay tuned for next week when we take you inside the new escape room as the Shelby TV team sees if we were up to task. 
You may see people lifting weights and drinking protein shakes at the gym trying to bulk up and gain muscle. Nick Buckler tells us there's a healthy way to do so without adding needless fat to your body. Nick? When I think of bulking up for the winter, I think eating everything in sight to gain fat. But Todd Macklett at Noble Personal Training told me I couldn't be any more wrong. It's all going to start with your nutrition. Uh, you want to get all your food groups in. You want to get your whole grains, healthy proteins, fruits, veggies, and then your good fats, good oils, and you want to drink a lot of water. What we eat, not how much we eat, is the most important component in gaining or losing weight. However, there is something you can do physically to ease into the season. Learn to do proper push-ups, proper squatting and hip hinging mechanics and lunging mechanics. And once you have those down, then you can move more into resistance uh, weighted exercises. Ideally, keep your weight on your heels. You'll sit your butt back, you'll open up your hips, trying to keep your back straight with the knees behind the toes, ideally. If they slide a little bit in front, you'll be okay. Everything moves as one unit. What? Put a broomstick on your back and you should be able, that, you should be able to do push-ups without that broomstick falling off. As the big eating holidays hit, I'm going to have to go cold turkey on the Halloween candy this year. Reporting for Shelby this week, I'm Nick Buckler. Thanks to a Lions Club member, Leader Dogs for the Blind was founded back in 1939. Now the club in Shelby Township is throwing another event to benefit the nonprofit. The annual wine tasting event will be on Friday, November 4th from 6.30 to 11 at the Palazzo Grande. There will be more than 100 wines to choose from along with dinner and a craft beer and liquor tasting for those that haven't become accustomed to the taste of wine. 100% of the proceeds go to the Leader Dogs for the Blind, but tickets are limited. For more information on where to register, head to our website, shelbytv.org. And the annual Veterans Memorial 5K Run will be held on Sunday, November 6th at Shelby Township's Municipal Building and May Stecker Park. Registration starts at 8 a.m. and the race starts at 10. 100% of the proceeds go to maintenance and improvements to the Shelby Township Veterans Memorial. Head to shelbytv.org to find out how you can register for the run. Next on Shelby This Week, you're probably getting your kids' costumes ready and all the candy that you're going to pass out. And you'll be excited to know we're on the list for the best places to trick or treat. Find out where the township ranked next. And we'll give you behind the scenes look at the football ritual with the Eisenhower Eagles. Stay tuned. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back. Real estate experts looked at home values, schools, populations of kids in the area, crime rates, and how close homes are to each other, all to figure out which community is best for trick-or-treating. This list was compiled by a local radio station, and standing at number two in the Metro Detroit area is our very own Shelby Township. And number five was Rochester Hills, followed by Taylor. Ann Arbor grabbed the number three spot, and at number one was Plymouth. So now that you know we've got the best place to trick-or-treat at, remember on Monday, October 31st, trick-or-treating starts at 6 p.m. and ends at 8 o'clock. We will hear sirens to signify both the start and end of trick-or-treating as well. Remember to dress your kids for the weather. Right now it looks like it will be partly cloudy and no rain, but we're still days away, so keep checking that forecast. And it would be helpful to pack them with flashlights or glow sticks to make sure they're visible to cars while walking down the street. And if you aren't passing out treats this year, remember, keep your porch lights off so that trick-or-treaters know not to come to your home. Boo! Happy Halloween! Everyone is in the Halloween spirit, including the Burgess Chad Bush Nature Center. The community came out, costumes and all, for the Nature Center's haunted house. They were treated to tricks on a haunted walk and lots of treats. 
kids trick-or-treated through the building where there were lots of spooky decorations and displays. The Nature Center staff put on lots of costumes and performed eerie skits for the kids as well. And everyone, even the parents, walked away with lots of candy. And in sports, Utica had a close win over Sterling Heights Stevenson in football. And in soccer, Dakota came out with the victory. We've got highlights. Week 9 football action in the Macomb Area Conference as your Utica Chieftains travel to Sterling Heights to face off with the Stevenson Titans on Senior Night. Jerome Cooper will get the scoring started in the first quarter for the Titans as he takes the direct snap up the middle, dives, and scores the game's first touchdown. The extra point is good and Stevenson would take a 7 to nothing lead. Utica would answer in the second quarter as Leonard Kaysen takes the handoff up the middle and forces his way in for a Chieftains touchdown. The extra point is good and the Chieftains would tie the game at seven before the half. Now in the fourth quarter, Kayvon Higdon takes the handoff on the end around and Higdon gets outside, cuts up field, turns on the Jets and goes untouched all the way in for a Chieftains touchdown. The extra point is good and Utica would take a 14-7 lead. This time the Titans would respond as quarterback Todd Poppard throws this rainbow to Jai Hinson in the corner of the end zone and Hinson makes the catch for a Stevenson touchdown. The extra point is good and the Titans tie the game at 14. On the ensuing drive, Patrick O'Connor steps back to pass, throws the screen pass over the head of Ryan Ayers and it is picked off by Angelo Essek and Essek takes it all the way in for a Titans touchdown. The extra point is good, and Stevenson would take a 21-14 lead. But the Chieftains wouldn't give up as Ryan Ayers takes this handoff in for a Utica touchdown. The Chieftains would go for two and the win using this well-designed trick play, and they would convert, taking a 22-21 lead with less than a minute to go. The Titans would get one last chance to win the game off the last second field goal, but Todd Poppard would miss wide right, and the Chieftains would go on to win by the score of 22 to 21. Eisenhower and Dakota battling for the district title in boys soccer. Early chance for the Eisenhower Eagles, Matt Shinamataro. Pass the goalie, Aiden Gannett for the Dakota Cougars. Jack Burnett sending it into the box, bouncing off some Eagle defenders. And in the back of the net, Luigi Eidheim into the second half. Throw in for Eisenhower. Almost a copycat play, bounces around Dakota defenders on the foot of Matus Barrett. And we're all tied up at one to one. Then a controversial goal, Matt Wojciechowicz. Throw in, but does it hit anybody? A throw in cannot be counted as a goal unless it touches someone from either team. The referees confer and they count it. Dakota's up two to one. And that's where it would stand as Dakota takes the district title. Final score, Dakota Cougars two, Eisenhower Eagles one. The Eisenhower High School football team has battled into the playoffs for the state championship. And while the excitement hasn't worn off, the other side of the coin is, who do they play next? There's a timeless tradition that reveals their competitor, and Arthur Schenk got an inside look at it. After finishing the regular season undefeated at 9-0, the Eisenhower Eagles gathered back in their war room to patiently await the playoff pairing announcements from the Michigan High School Athletic Association. Selection Sunday, as it's been coined, has become a much anticipated event for those teams on the verge of making the playoffs. For a Division I team like Eisenhower, who held the highest total of playoff earning points in the state of Michigan, the wait was a little longer. Then finally, they got to the Division I matchups. Finally, Region 4 District 1, the Utica <laughs> The Eagles found that they match up against the Lance Cruz North Crusaders, a team they destroyed 70 to 6 at their own homecoming. We beat them pretty good in the regular season when we played them. Um, it was raining out, so their offense really consists of a throwing game, so I think that rain really affected their, their passing game. So we expect them to be a different team. 
um, when they come out in these playoffs, and it's a playoff game. So we're going to prepare like it's a playoff team. Um, no matter who the opponent is, um, they've earned the right to be here, and uh, they've won a lot of games. So um, it's 0-0 zero to zero right now, and we're going to go out there and give it our best. Got a lot of guys that are making a lot of plays for us. Uh, I think I talked to our offense today. We got 13 different guys that scored touchdowns. So uh, it's an unselfish offense. We definitely uh, like to spread the ball around. And uh, the guys are just going out there and, and executing. So far this year, the Eagles have outscored their opponents 377 to 59, with three of their victories being shutouts. That gave Eisenhower the chance to get some playing time for their players, who could most benefit the team in the future. We got we got depth and uh, we got some confidence in a lot of guys after after getting after getting a chance to see a lot of guys play in the second quarter, third quarters, and uh, the way we finished up it was, it was good to see. So these kids are really confident about what they're doing. Um, winning does that for you, you know, it gives you confidence. But they're not cocky. They're very unselfish. I think our starters have only played three games, to, you know, that we've that they've had to play a full game. So. Other than that, we've had a lot of guys that have played and got great playing time against teams, starters also. So um, we have confidence in a lot of kids. Uh, we've got a confidence in a lot of kids that are coming off the bench. And, uh, you know, hopefully they get their shot, you know, in this week. From the war room at Eisenhower High School, I'm Arthur Schink for Shelby This Week. And congratulations to their quarterback, Max Whitwer. He was named the Mac Red MVP of the year. Congratulations, Max. And that's it for us here at Shelby This Week. You can watch us all the time on shelbytv.org. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. You'll find all of this information plus much more. And in the Halloween spirit, the Shelby TV team will leave you now with pictures of us dressed in our own Halloween costumes over the years. Thanks for watching.